Good evening and welcome to Altos, our weekly Catholic news program done in collaboration with Trinity TV. Here's a look at this week's top stories. The government of Trinidad and Tobago joined several of its CARICOM counterparts in not signing a controversial European economic trade deal. The Archbishop is relieved and will tell you why. As we prepare to commemorate World Day for the Poor on Sunday, we continue a series on Catholic organizations dedicated to helping the poor. Hear how the Society of St. Vincent de Paul is faring. President Christine Kangaloo praises the new inductees to the St. Joseph's Convent Hall of Excellence. And later on, we chat with Leela Ramdeen, consultant with the Catholic Commission for Social Justice on that controversial EU economic agreement. But here's our top story. Trinidad and Tobago is among nine Caribbean countries that this week refused to sign a new European Union treaty that will govern relationships between the EU and 79 African, Caribbean, and Pacific nations. Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Amy Brown told Altos on Tuesday that this country was not in a position to sign the agreement at this time. The Samoa Agreement is the successor to the Cotonou Agreement, which was signed in the year 2000. But 35 of the 79 ACP states refused to sign the new treaty at a ceremony held on Wednesday in Apia, Samoa. Among them, nine Caribbean states, 20 African countries, and six in the Pacific. Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon says he is relieved Trinidad and Tobago did not sign the Samoa Agreement. Laura Pickford Gordon has more in this story. The agreement is the new legal framework for relations between the EU and 79 countries, including 16 Caribbean. It is wide-ranging and includes clauses on human rights, democracy and governance, human and social development, climate change and migration. U.S. Family Watch International and the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society have criticized provisions in the agreement. As Bishop Gordon is pleased the government has not signed. Jamaica and Namibia have also not yet signed. Thank God I understand that our government is not signing the document today. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. That our, our government got wind of it, has seen and understood, and they're saying they don't have enough information to be able to sign today. Thank God for that. Archbishop Gordon warned of foreign ideologies and values embedded in the agreement. Anyone who signs that agreement will have abortion legislation in their countries. They will have to impose abortion legislation, um, transgender, um, LBGTQ, um, comprehensive sex education, a whole range of values will be imposed because of the signing of the document. He said people must stand for kingdom values, even if it means suffering in the world for taking a stance. We can't keep our eye on the short-term benefit of a trade treaty promising us trinkets and, and, and glitter. We have to keep our eyes on the long-term benefit of the kingdom of God, on heaven itself, and on what God has asked us and put into our hands, both to foster and to protect. The dignity of the human person is not for sale. I am Lara Pickford-Gordon for Catholic News, Altos. And later on in the program, we talk with Leela Ramdeen, retired head of the Catholic Commission for Social Justice, about the church's concerns. Do not look away from the poor. A Bible passage from Tobit verses 4 and 7 is the theme of the 2023 World Day for the Poor, which will be observed on Sunday. Here's more from Rome Reports. This weekend marks the seventh annual World Day of the Poor. It is an initiative started by Pope Francis that encourages all to go forth to encounter poverty, a topic he has often spoken about. Le pido perdón todas las veces que los cristianos delante de una persona pobre o de una situación pobre miramos para otro lado. Perdón. 
At 10 a.m. on Sunday, November 19th, Pope Francis will preside over a Eucharistic celebration in St. Peter's Basilica. Directly after the celebration and following tradition from past years, he will attend a lunch with the poor in Paul VI Audience Hall. In his 2023 message, Pope Francis stressed the importance of everyone's active involvement in alleviating the plight of the poor. He lamented that today's culture often ignores their cries. He thanked the volunteers already working with the poor and marginalized and who looked after both their material and spiritual needs. Pope Francis has also advocated for policy changes in governments and cited other contributors of poverty, for example, the speculation in various sectors that drive up prices and causes families to suffer, war and exploitative labor practices. We continue to shine the spotlight on charitable organizations locally that have been helping the poor. We highlight the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. The society is present in over 150 countries with over 800,000 members and over 1 million volunteers and is part of the global Catholic climate movement. Locally, they have been struggling to assist those in need, even going so far as to sell properties to pay off their debts. Catholic News Altos contributor Kleisha Best tells us more in this story. If you know someone who is homeless or has nowhere else to turn for help, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul can be an option. The Society, whose origins date back to Paris, France in 1833, is dedicated to feeding, clothing, housing, and healing individuals and families in our community. They also provide opportunities for volunteers to serve their neighbors in need. However, they too are in need of assistance. Society of St. Vincent de Paul's Roger Watson shared some background on the society here in Trinidad and Tobago and what has been taking place on the ground. The society did celebrate 150 years a couple of years ago, so which means it is going into almost 160 years now. The society are doing voluntary work, we're doing fundraisers, we're doing all sorts of different things and when we get, we used to be giving it to the poor. While food and clothing drives are a weekly occurrence, donations and fundraisers are the key to their survival. Mr. Watson mentioned some of the things that the Society of St. Vincent de Paul engages in, as well as what their needs are currently. We will have fundraisers. As take for instance now, we have um, the annual raffle. So that is one of the main fundraisers. It will have things like the poor man dinner, a brunch, a breakfast. They have a number of different things, you know? Foodstuffs, 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 foodstuffs. Essential things. Flour, rice, oil, all the essential things. You know, because we can't compel people to bring this, to bring that, all these other things. Whatever they bring, we thankful. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul has been a saving grace to many homeless in our society. Martin Gray, who lived on the streets for several years, told us how the society helped him. You get three spenders. If you don't have any clothes, you can come here and get your clothes. I came out and I got an opportunity to get a job. He had some listening and that helped me greatly. Many homeless people have um, a drug problem. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you have to do is get them off the drugs. The Roman Catholic Church in Trinidad and Tobago is hoping to build a bridge between residents of Silots and the rest of the country by offering the community new hope towards building their skills and improving their quality of life. In an effort to make this a reality, there will be a special collection for the refurbishment of the Sea Lots Vocational School at Masses and Services held on the weekend of Saturday, November 25th and Sunday, November 26th. That's the weekend the church celebrates the Feast of Christ the King. Catholic News Alto spoke with Jenny Lee of Archbishop's Appeal about this project. The refurbishment of a vocational school in Silots is being undertaken by the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Port of Spain in collaboration with the Eternal Light community. It is hoped that the initiative will create a sense of inclusivity, open and constructive dialogue, and anti-crime initiatives, as well as help grow the skill set and make available educational opportunities for residents in the area. Achieving this goal requires help. Archbishop Jason with Eternal Light Community, who have been working in the Sea Lots community for the past six plus years, are building, refurbishing two buildings in the Sea Lots area and creating a vocational school. And this comes from the, the residents themselves. 
after meeting with them over and over again, they identified areas in which they needed help. Joblessness, homelessness, lack of parental parents, drug use, violence, and we know, huh? we know. We know just the name Sealots instills a kind of fear within the national community. But your church is trying to change it, and we're asking you to help us. A wide range of programs will be offered at the school, including carpentry, tailoring, plumbing, and academic studies. Adult literacy classes will also be offered. Jenny Lee of the Archbishop's Appeal Fund told Altos positive changes have been taking place in the Sealots community through the project. She said the initiative has significant promise and is a model that can be introduced to other communities. And also we see this as a, it could be a model for underserved areas in Trinidad and Tobago. Will you help us? We are trying to see if we can fight crime from a diff different aspect, by building the hope of a community, by giving them a chance at education. But we cannot do it alone. So this is why we're coming to you. Feast of Christ the King, November 25th and 26th in your parish, or just go online, appealtt.com, and you'll find all the information that you need. And we thank Jenny Lee for her earnest words of appeal, and we urge you, our parishioners, our Catholic community, to be extra generous in your contributions during the collection at next weekend's Masses. Eight women have been inducted into the St. Joseph's Convent Port of Spain Hall of Excellence. The school's 11th Biennial Hall of Excellence induction ceremony was held at the convent's chapel on November 7th under the theme, Eng Engaging Community, Inspiring Hope. Delivering the Fiti Address, President Christine Kangaloo, herself a product of St. Joseph's Convent San Fernando, praised the inductees for their example to the community and the nation. The Hall of Excellence is hosted by the school's Past Pupils Association. We congratulate all the inductees. Interesting fact, both Her Excellency and the Speaker of the House, Bridget Anisette George, are alumni of St. Joseph's Convent, the former from Port of Spain and the latter from San Fernando. And so, as we celebrate the excellence of the eight women we gather this evening to honor, it is the entire community that is given hope by their example. It is the entire continent and the whole of the Maine that benefit from and, it is, and are inspired by their achievements. And so, to F Sister Philip jo Jofa, rep representative of Sister Gabrielle Meeson, Dr. Lenise Batiste, Miss Leslie Ann Boissel, Dr. Eldona Boisson, Dr. Aisha Chow, Miss Claire Eunice Gittens, and Dr. Tonya Villafana, Please accept my most sincere congratulations on your induction into this Hall of Excellence and your outstanding achievement over the years. It is my hope that the success of those we celebrate this evening and the recognition that we bestow upon them for their efforts will encourage others to follow in their footsteps. She has been described as mother, sister, confidant, and spiritual director to many priests, religious, and laity in our archdiocese. So there was much to celebrate last Saturday, November 11th, as Dominican sister Mary Ann Bradshaw celebrated 60 years of religious profession. Sister Ann entered Rosary Monastery on May 5th, 1962. She began her novitiate on November 5th of that year and was given the name Sister Mary Ann of the Blessed Sacrament. She professed solemn vows on November 9th, 1963. She has held every position in the monastery, worked in the altar bread department most of her life, and nursed every sister during their illnesses. In their joint homilies during the celebratory mass, Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon and Bishop Clyde Harvey of St. George's in Grenada spoke of her faithfulness and her devotion to prayer and service. Congratulations, Sister Anne, from all of us at Catholic News Altos. 
The annual gala seminary dinner came off at the Center of Excellence Macoya on Friday, November 10th. The dinner was held under the patronage of Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon, saxophonist Pedro Lezama, and popular Parang band Los Alumnos de San Juan were among the entertainers. Here's just a bit of the night's activities. The dinner is the major fundraising event for the Seminary of St. John Vianney and the Uganda Martyrs, which is celebrating its 80th anniversary this year. You can continue supporting our seminarians by purchasing one or more of the handy, branded 80th anniversary tote bags. Financial contributions can also be made directly to the seminary. It's now time for us to take a short break, and when we return, we speak via Zoom with Leela Ramdeen, consultant with the Catholic Commission for Social Justice, about the controversial EU partnership agreement. Stay with us. But until then, see if you can answer a simple trivia question. Welcome back after the break. We hope you were able to get the answer to this week's trivia question. Leela Ramdeen has long been a proponent of social justice and equality. Until recently, she served as the chair of the Catholic Commission for Social Justice. Now retired, she serves in an advisory capacity. Altos is able to pin her down to discuss the latest developments in the post-Cotonou agreement. Leela, welcome to Altos. Welcome to the set. It's so great to have you. Good evening. Thank you, Neil. Good to be here. Great. Let's dive into it. Archbishop mm -hmm. Jason Gordon has expressed relief at the government's decision to not sign, well, now the Samoa Agreement. Yes. Why is that refusal to sign an economic agreement so important to the church? Okay. First of all, the Samoa Agreement um, was signed by, well, 76 of the 79 countries. That included 47 African, 16 Caribbean, well, 14 Caribbean and 15 Pacific countries with 27 European countries and the Maldives. Now, together, it's important to know that there's a population of 2 billion people that signed uh, with a, a part of this um, ACP uh, EU um, you know, group. And jointly, this is important, they hold 106 seats at the UN, over half the seats. So you see the power of, mm -hmm. of this group. Now, this it's important to understand why in fact, Jamaica didn't sign, and I, we don't know the reason. Uh, Dr. Amory Brown had said Trinidad and Tobago wouldn't sign, they told Catholic News. But from Jamaica, we know that the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society and seven NGOs had raised concern, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, made it clear that the government would delay the signing of the agreement to facilitate ongoing consultations, um, but they would still participate in the meeting. Now, at the Jamaica, Dr. West from the Jamaica Coalition for Healthy Society rightly said that if, we, if they sign, they will be accepting terms that directly threaten citizens' freedom of conscience and speech. And aspects of the agreement really seek to bind Jamaica to un, and other countries to unknown future outcomes. Namibia also was concerned, um, about, and they had notified the EU, about the absence of a glossary of terms or definition section within the agreement, which is crucial to ensuring a shared understanding of the terms. And Article 36.2, which to us is really important um, in the Caribbean, Article 36.2 of the agreement requires Caribbean states and others to implement sexual and reproductive health and rights. The EU, the European Union, in June 2022, 20, in a resolution titled on the situation of sexual and reproductive health and rights in the EU, defined sexual reproductive health and rights to encompass sexuality education, sexual orientation, and gender identity. 
taking into consideration, this is important, UNESCO's controversial international technical guidance on sexuality um, education. Now, this uh, UN guidance um, is not accepted or approved by the UN, and we've had several meetings with PANCAP, that's the Pan-Caribbean on, on HIV and AIDS, with UN reps about this, um, and his grace uh, eventually wrote a, a letter to our prime minister saying why we could not support this. One of the things it does is that it promotes gender for, for us in the church. This document and signing an agreement with this referring that we have mandated to introduce this, it promotes gender confusion, promiscuity, abortion, sexual rights to children under the guise of sexual education, sexuality education. Some of the topics for the young age group are simply inappropriate and some are harmful. Fluid gender is one of them. A child so, is, will be taught that gender is different from biological sex and they can choose their gender. Hmm. Children will be but, encouraged but, to try out different gender types yes. and select one that they feel comfortable but, but with. But Leela, are we, are we yes. then seeing a conflation of issues where it's an economic agreement. Yes. But it's an economic agreement that, that attaches these onerous conditions or these conditions that are contrary to church to, to our church's teachings. Carrots Is, isn't and that sticks. what we're seeing? Carrots and sticks. We know from our Catholic Catechism 2332, it makes it clear sexuality affects all aspects of the human person in the unity of um, body and soul. The real challenge for us is it approaches sexuality, as His Grace has said in the past, as an end in itself, not as a means towards mm -hmm. end of marriage and procreation. Mm -hmm. It focuses on desire, not on sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It excites the curiosity and appetite of the young, does not offer them a path to discipline. But and we know in they, 1995, yeah. the Pontifical Council for the Family produced guidelines for education within the family. Leela, are, you, are you aware, Leela, of yes. any other international agencies like the European Union that have attached yeah. these kinds of conditions to loan, loan conditionalities in order for, you know, to, to be able to disburse loans to other countries. Are you aware of any other I, I'm, agencies I'm like that? I'm not aware of any of us really, but it mm -hmm. was Family Watch International. We must thank them for alerting the world um, to, to the, the, the sections and Jamaica and Namibia mm -hmm. uh, in, this, in this agreement that really will bind us mm -hmm. um, in a way that, that will not help our people, children to form their consciences. Yeah. Because, the, the, Lila, the, we, we've recently been, been told, for instance, that yeah. the World Bank has frozen yeah. all loans to Uganda simply yeah. because of their anti-gay yes. laws, for instance. That's true. Do you think that's that that's true. one of the risks that we run, that we face yeah. as a country, in, in, your, in not signing on to this agreement? Yes. And in fact, when we've had, His Grace had set up a little group of us from different commissions to look at the issues um, from that technical guidance. And one of the things that happened is because we had meetings with the PANCAP UN rep, in the end, he supposed, I suppose he got so fed up with us re rejecting the guidance that he said they're taking it to, to CARICOM. Mm -hmm. So the fear we have is, and this is why the AEC bishops, need to make sure in all our country, countries in which they're bishops that they make it clear to, to their governments that this is they should not be signing documents such as this. But Leela, there's a, there's a common thread I see running through all the countries that have refused to sign. So the yes. nine Caribbean countries, the, twen the, the 20 African countries, and the yes. six Pacific states have all mm -hmm. been former colonial territories. Yes. Is it's a new this, form of colon colonialization. Precisely. Is this then the new form of colonialization? Yes. That in order for yes. you to get our money, you must, yes. you must satisfy these conditions which are contrary to our church's teachings. And in fact, it's an insult to the, the hearts and minds of us Caribbean people and all the other countries that are involved. It's an insult to us. Mm -hmm. And it really is a, a form of oppression. Mm -hmm. Leela, the average Catholic... People, people look, looking at us yes. tonight, people looking at, at the program, the average Catholic doesn't know anything about this. No. How no. do we, how do we, how does the Catholic, you know, Commission for Social Justice, how do we as church, how do we increase the awareness of, of, of things like this, which impact so much on, the, on, on what we believe as Catholics? I think what is important for us is not only to highlight the dangers, 
but to highlight what our church is telling us. Our, that uh, document, 1995 Pontifical Council Family, produced the guidelines they produced entitled The Truth and the Meaning of Human Sexuality. And here are two extracts. It says human sexuality is a sacred mystery and must be presented according to the doctrinal and moral teaching of the church. And it says parents must be aware of their rights and duties, particularly in the face of a state or a school that tends to take up the initiative in the area of sex education or which carry out programs of sex education by taking the place of the family. The importance of, of these two statements from our guidelines in the church is that this agreement takes away control uh, the rights of parents. The rights of parents. In fact, it makes it clear you don't have to involve parents at all, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're educating children about sexuality. And, 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 and Lila, we all understand the, the, the tremendous role of the, of, of the household as, the, yes. as a domestic church. And the parents, the parents as, we, as raising their educators, children. Educators, yes? yes, first educators of their children. L Lila, yes. Lila, unfortunately, that's where we have to leave it for today. We thank you very much for, for, for chatting with us. And I'm sure thank we'll you. get back to you on another occasion to discuss other topics of, of Catholic social justice. Thank you so much, Neil. Not a problem. Bye-bye. Altos, from the Latin altos, meaning high. Every Friday night, we feature the top news items hot off the press. We are taking a leap of faith on Trinity TV. Jump in with us for this new and exciting experience. Welcome back after the break. We hope you were able to get the answer to this week's trivia question. And here's a look at some of the upcoming events in the Archdiocese. And here's a sneak peek at what's inside this week's edition of the Catholic News with Associate Editor Simone de Lochan. In the November 19th issue of the Catholic News, read our lead story on the social implications of the Samoa Treaty and the beautiful tribute to Sister Anne on her 60th anniversary of religious profession. I am Simone de Lochan, Associate Editor of the Catholic News. And remember, you can also get a copy of your Catholic News at all Superfarm pharmacies and Massey stores. While you are there, pick up an extra copy and share with someone. And remember as well, you can catch a repeat of this program at 3 p.m. on Sundays or here, right here on Trinity TV. As we close, we leave you with some clips from the Novice Five concert hosted by the parish of St. Philip and James in Chagonas on November 5th. Have a wonderful week, everyone.